Hey guys, once again, welcome to our channel. So as you can suggest by the video's thumbnail that in today's video, we are going to discuss, we are going to continue with our previous concept that was criteria of purity. Since there were a few co important concepts that we are going to deal with. So we are going to talk about them in detail. So before we begin, let me just show you the syllabus first. So in our previous video, we discussed the knowledge and understanding of paper chromatography and we also discussed how can we interpret simple chromatograms. We also discussed how to identify substances and assess their purity from their MP and BP, obviously melting point and boiling point information. And that how can those melting point and boiling point information can be used to assess the substances whether they are impure or whether they are pure. All right. And in today's video, we are going to talk about in detail the importance of purity in substances in everyday life. Uh, specific examples will include foodstuffs and drugs. And we are also going to interpret simple chromatograms, including the use of RF values, which I'm going to surely talk about in a moment. And we are also going to outline how chromatography techniques can be applied to colorless substances for example, proteins, by exposing chromatograms to substances called locating agents. So, before I proceed with our uh, concepts, make sure you're subscribed to the channel and hit the like button and uh, make sure you press the bell icon so you receive our videos at first. So, without wasting our precious time, let us get started. So, our first concept that is importance of purity so why is purity important? The question will be one. Uh, the question will be, uh, you will be wondering why. What is the importance of purity? Now, a pure substance consists of only one substance and contains nothing else. All right. And to have a pure substance for food and drugs, mentioning specifically, which is important to our life, uh, is very important as impurities could be dangerous even in small amounts. Now, as we discussed in our previous video that melting point and boiling point analysis is routinely used to assess the purity of food and drugs. Even if these impurities are present in small amounts, they could be dangerous to our lives. And so there be uh, so these melting point and boiling point information is routinely used to assess the purity of food and drugs. Now, for example, let's take an example. For instance, if a sample of water melts at exactly 0 degrees Celsius and boils at exactly 100 degrees Celsius, then the water is pure. Alright, so what does this mean? Now this means, now if you have noticed the melting point and boiling point of water, you can see that they have a fixed melting point and a boiling point. And the melting point is 0 degrees Celsius and 100 degrees Celsius. Now, if the water boils and melts at these specific temperatures, then we can determine these that the substance, the water is pure. And if it melts and boils over a range of temperatures or it melts or boils at a different temperature, then we can say that the water might con the water uh, the water would contain impurities. So the water is impure. It's a mixture. Now, if the melting point and boiling point of the water are in these exact values, then the water must be impure and contain other substances and it must be a mixture. So we need to ensure that water or the substance which we are testing for purity, which we are going to use, which we are going to utilize, melts and boils at specific temperatures if it is pure. But if it's a mixture, it will melt and boil over a range of temperatures so we are gonna we should be familiar with that one more important thing now interestingly the boiling point and melting point of a substance can give us an indication of how pure it is as we discussed earlier now there are some substances some tests we need to be familiar with and what are those tests now melting if you're testing a solid for example the melting point of a solid now, if the solid is pure, its melting point will be sharp. It will have a sharp melting point. Whereas, if it is an impure substance, it will melt over temperature range and at lower temperatures than the pure solid. Alright, so we need to be familiar with this. And what about uh, if we test another substance that is, uh, for example, boiling point of a liquid? 
and if impurity is dissolved is a dissolved solid now if the impurity is a dissolved solid and we are testing for a liquid all right the boiling point of a liquid then the pure substance will have a sharp boiling point and all the liquid will boil at the same temperature at a constant temperature now if it's an impure substance then what will happen then the scenario will be different because the liquid will boil over a range of temperatures and it will boil at higher temperatures than the pure liquid all right now if we are talking about boiling point of a liquid if the impurity is another liquid so previously we discussed if the impurity was a dissolved solid and in this scenario we have another liquid as an impurity then what will happen if it's a pure substance the melting the boiling point will be sharp and all the liquid will boil at a constant temperature and if it's an impure substance boils it will boil over a range of temperatures and it will start to boil at the boiling point of one liquid and it will rise to the boiling point of the other i.e it will be a mixture all right now moving on to our next concept that is retention factor rf values now what are these values now these values are used to identify the components of a mixture the RF values of a particular compound is always the same. Calculating the RF values allows chemists to identify unknown substances because it can be compared with the RF values of known substances under the same conditions. Now, as we you know that we discussed earlier in the previous video about the paper chromatography technique, and we discussed how it starts, how how it finishes. Um, Basically, the solvent will travel up the chromatograph paper as the solvent moves up. The sample spot of liquid will dissolve in the solvent. And if the liquid was a mixture, the various substances inside the mixture will begin to separate. And they will be shown as, uh, you can see the different colored spots. All right. Because uh, I think if you, if you didn't watch the video, please watch that video. Then come back to this video. All right. So substance, some substances will travel up the paper slower than the others and reach a different end point. All right. Now. In the particular example we discussed in our previous video, it was clear that the liquid or the ink spot is a mixture. Why? Because we saw that it has separated into three different components. All right. That was green, purple and yellow. If you didn't see that, please watch that video. And if the liquid A was pure, then you would see only one component. You won't, you won't see that it was separated into different components. You will see only it started with one component and ended with one component. All right. Now, we know that if liquid A was colorless, then the process can be carried out. If the liquid was colorless, which we are going to do with the chromatography process, if that liquid was colorless, then the process can be carried out exactly as before, but a locating agent will be required to locate all the separated spots later in order to measure the RF values. Okay. Now, about locating agents, we are going to discuss in a moment. Now, finally, we saw that the liquid was a mixture in that chromatography process. And we could actually determine what each of the substances are exactly. To do so, we need to calculate the RF value of each of the separated components on the chromatogram. Now, you might be wondering well, how we can calculate the RF value. So, there is a specific formula for that. A particular formula for that and that is retention factor equals distance moved by the compound and it will be divided by the distance moved by the solvent and one more important thing to consider is that rf value is a ratio and therefore has no units remember that all right and one more thing all substances will have a unique rf value and therefore you will be find out you'll be able to find out what exactly the substance is it you have a reference table in an examination, they always provide you with this. So make sure you are familiar with this concept also. And moving on to, uh, so you can see here a clear diagram. I have represent, I presented here that we are going to use the formula here. That will be the distance traveled by the spot or your component. So you can see initially the distance, the traveled by the substance. The distance between this starting point and the end point of the substance you can see that is approximately three uh three centimeters three centimeters 
and the distance of it travels up by the solvent that could be your water or your propane propane any solvent so mainly water will be used for this uh, so you need to try you need to measure that distance as well so how much uh, how much the water has traveled but it in this case in this scenario it has traveled six centimeters so how can you find the rf value three over six all right that will be approximately half centimeters no a half because rf value don't have units sorry for uh, that and moving on to our next concept that is locating agents now what are locating agents as we discussed here uh, in the previous video that for uh, in, in our previous slides that locating agents are some looking these are agents that are uh, able that helps us to identify what if there are invisible samples if we are going for in if you're testing for invisible samples then how can we see them with the naked eye all right so for chromatography to be useful the chemist needs to be able to see the components move the paper which is not the case for invisible samples such as proteins now locating agents are substances which react with the sample and produce a colored product which is then visible the chromatogram is treated with the agent after the chromatography run has been carried out making the samples sample runs visible to the naked eye so what we need to understand here is that if you are testing an invisible sample for example proteins then we have the chemist or the person doing the experiment will have to use locating agents and what those locating agents will do they will just simply react with the sample and produce a colored product which will be then visible to the person's naked eye all right so this was the end of our concept i hope you're familiar with all of the uh, main concepts that we discussed in this chapter and make sure you watch our previous videos and this video also as well and uh, you need to be familiar with all the processes all the formulas we are going to discuss one by one in the upcoming videos the first formula i think this was this was the first formula that we just discussed that rf value uh, other than that we didn't discuss any formulas right so in our next video what we're going to do that will be your uh, methods of purification where we are going to discuss filtration centrifugation and decanting how all this works simple distillation fractional distillation and what apparatuses you will be using everything we are going to discuss later in detailed detailed uh, detail in detail we are going to discuss in later videos so make sure you have pressed your bell icon and you so you can receive those videos at first and make sure you're subscribed to our channel hit the like button comment down below so i can just improve my content and uh, that's it for today take care and have a good day